we welcome on board Rahul Shah as well. He's been wading through uh, tech troubles. But Rahul, uh, hi, morning. IT definitely in focus. You'll soon have uh, earnings as well kickstart. And today you've got Infosys, which is expected to get a sizable refund uh, to the tune of about 6,300-odd crore rupees. You think uh, you are uh, gung-ho about what IT, at least large caps, are likely to deliver this earnings? Hi, good morning. I think... Uh... Obviously, what we've seen in the IT in the post uh, uh, Q2, sorry, Q3 earnings numbers, when we saw that, I think most of the IT stocks moved up quite sharply, right? I think, and most of the uh, people on the streets were underweight on IT. And we saw that little tailwind in terms of the best in few stocks. We saw margin expansion when we in few few stocks. We saw a little growth coming back into the momentum, and we saw that most of the stocks rallied quite sharply. And uh, post uh, that, I think uh, large cap ITs have done a little bit than the mid cap IT names. And I think that comfort between the overall market also is more into the, the large cap IT, uh, large cap uh, companies than the mid caps. So I think the uh, uh, large cap IT names obviously should continue to do well. I think uh, we saw the sun performance by TCS and Wipro from last quarter, but I think Infi is almost uh, null. And I think the uh, stock has done nothing. And, and I think today's gain in terms of the windfall gains of, of, of tax refund what they've got i think there might be some momentum coming back to uh, in the stock uh for near term okay <clears throat> fair enough that's the view coming in uh when it comes to the it space but how are you looking at the performance of the entire auto sector the fact that we are looking at some of those two wheelers that will be in the spotlight with respect to it's been a fairly decent um fiscal year for the auto sector what's the outlook ahead so I think the uh, auto continue to will continue to do well. I think uh, two three things always well for the auto. One is obviously uh, stable on the sale prices, and I think uh, that's been the biggest beneficiary. Second, I think uh, way people have the uh, 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 consumption theme, which has been driven in I think in auto back. Uh, I think you've seen uh, that has done quite well. Thirdly, I think launches of two wheelers for most of them, like say for example Hero, uh, you know the of new launches and focus of from 125 cc so is the case with bajaj so it, and obviously and so on and on so my sense is i think if you look at it i have a year on year uh, uh in both the cases uh bajaj as well as uh hero i think uh the thing should do well and i think that's reflecting in the stock prices as well so we still expect the momentum to continue into the, the two wheeler spaces uh going forward and i would uh remain invested in this two wheeler theme Okay, that's the verdict coming in on what to anticipate from two wheelers. A lot of other stocks which are going to be in focus today as well. Garden Reed Shipbuilders, their annual turnover for uh, fiscal 24 has crossed that 3,400 crore rupee mark. Uh, and that's a growth of about 33% on a year on year basis that we've seen. In the last 52 weeks alone, the stock has moved quite swiftly, over a 70% gain. So look out for what this as well uh, does in trade today. Besides that, of course, you know, a bunch of other names which are going to be in focus. Landmark cars as well. We just flagged off earlier today that they're expanding now their brand offerings. And uh, they're going to be adding Kia India as well to their portfolio. They start our technologies as well, wherein Bank of America has upgraded the stock to a buy with a target price of 1250 And then Muthoot Finance, wherein Infestech has initiated long on Muthoot. So just look out of, for what all of these names do in trade. Uh, but Kunal, what's looking like the strongest auto stock to you? So, so far, uh, I think Maruti is now a comeback for itself. Bajaj Auto has been the strongest stock uh, from the uh, two-wheeler pack. That's a stock which I think has gone through and like a consistent uh, upward move for itself. Tata Motor somehow I think is taking a pause at the 1000 mark. We saw the stock moving above the 1000 levels. But somehow over the last one month or so, the stock is just gyrating into a range, broadly 8%, uh, 7-8% seven band from the 1000 levels. So 920, 930 as a support and 1050-60 as a resistance. Hero Motor Corp is something which has started to look very attractive. The stock uh, had done reasonably well till the uh, end of December 2023. Then over the last one or two months, the stock was going through a consolidation. It's now looking quite strong in terms of a comeback. My sense is that the stock should make a fresh high for itself. m and is something which was, I think, uh, had corrected some 200 points. So from just very close to that 2000 levels, the stock had corrected towards 1800 mark. And from 1800 levels, the stock is back uh, closer to that 1900-1920 mark. So I think MLM is also something which looks attractive. But as of now, the strongest 
chart and the more potential upside is something uh, which you can see on Maruti. Oh yeah, absolutely. Motown had it extremely steady all through the financial year. In fact, Bajaj Auto managed to gain about 137% in the fiscal gone by. You had Tara Motors with a 137% gain. Hero Motor Corp as well held high by about 102%. That's the kind of return that you made on the stock. As was the case with other names like Adani Ports, with Coal India as well, which held out very, very smartly too. Uh, but Rahul, in terms of a trigger, considering, you know, we have lots to work with uh, this week itself, not just this year, we just wanted to understand what do you think is going to really act as a, a big trigger for the market? Because, you know, you'll have the election narrative, which is going to kickstart. We're kickstarting a brand new series as well. We just talked about as to how the uh, auto monthly uh, data as well is also going to be uh, important. And of course, uh, you know, you've... Uh, also got the MPC meet, you've got, uh, you know, trading books which will reopen for this fiscal too. And the provisional updates as well will start trickling in. So, so I think uh, all of them, I think, uh, have important relevance to each of them. So I think uh, obviously we'll be just be starting with uh, the new year as well in terms of financial new year. <laughs> and obviously the quarterly updates from the most of the um, uh, organizations will start coming with a few of them with the banks. That's also numbers to be looked at. It. Secondly, obviously, the biggest view would be coming from the NPC meet. Then I think all eyes on them. So because uh, they have been, RBI has been very active in terms of in terms of various pockets in last few uh, months. So I think uh, that's going to be, these two are going to be a key thing, which I feel that in this week, uh, one should look at it. Rahul, uh, we saw almost a, almost like a mid-air turbulence in the month of March. A lot of brokers also decided to shut down and cut down their exposure. A lot of margin limits have been uh, off balance because of the sell-off. Do you think everything will neutralize and we could start uh, with the reset button as we roll over, as you know, now we start a brand new financial year? Well, I think the... And uh, to start with, I think, yes, the, the mid-cap uh, stocks had a very fantastic rally. Let's accept it. And everybody was expecting some kind of a pause, for whatever reason, maybe. So maybe through the brokers or maybe through the selling by mutual funds or maybe through some so on and on, various noises we keep on hearing in the markets. So my sense is, I think, obviously, most of them have corrected 20-25% and in some cases, maybe more or maybe lesser. Uh, so, but I think where this markets absorbs it, and and I think slow and slowly, what we see that I think stability in the few major names in the mid caps, I think this will get uh, uh, again be back to the normalized what we were there in uh, in a month back or so. I think things will become normal. Rahul, what is the best way according to you to bet on the power theme? Should one buy NTPC? Should one buy Tata Power or JSW? Or one should bet on transmission and distribution? I think. Uh, to look at it, I think the one important thing, I think PSQ as a whole has turned out as a very good team in the last one year. So my sense is, I think, uh, the more I would still play on the uh, uh, PSU pack and, and in that front, I think obviously NTPC looks quite interesting. And obviously, as you mentioned, two stocks like uh, uh, Power Financial, I think PSC and RDC, both looks, uh, you know, too good to play entire the power team in countries. So I think these three stocks looks quite interesting to me in the next one year or so. Okay. Um, meantime, uh, let's also get in a take then as to what the outlook is when it comes to the likes of Amutut Finance. It's on Investsex radar and they're talking about how there could be a slowdown in unsecured loans, but upgrade will continue to the consensus estimates post the Q4 numbers. How stocks that you track within this space, uh, gold loan companies like Amutut, what's the uh, trajectory looking like? Well, I think uh, we, the RBAs have and uh, each thing is very clear in terms of the uh, all NBFC. One is, I think, uh, a break in terms of an unsecured funding, I think, unsecured loan way that things have been gone for in the most of the NBFCs in the last two, three years. So I think that's going to be a challenge for them, and I think that would, uh, you know, affect the growth. Second is, I think, uh, most important, I think, that the lending by the banks for most of the uh, NBFC it was easier for them to raise money through banks. Again, there were the and their intervention is going to be a big for them. So I think, uh, uh, and thirdly, I think pay the interest rates uh, trajectory, I think either the cut, uh, which is it's taken a lot long time. So I think that's again going to impact uh, uh, all the NBFCs. 
So my sense is, I think a way the banks will grow. I think there will be a uh, you know uh, most of the NBFC will face new challenges in year term. So I think if you have to have a choice, then I think the banks would be a better choice to invest in for the risk versus reward. However, if someone wants to invest, I think both Mandapuram and Mukut uh, look good in terms of the uh, gold loan company. You know, a lot of these uh, companies will be in the spotlight on the back of order wins that we highlighted as well. Torrent Par, for instance, a project cost uh, of about 18.25 crore rupees. You've got uh, that stock that will be in the limelight today. RVNL, their L1 for 3 project worth millions on a single day, close to 148 crores plus 95. Um, and uh, so it's additional projects like that. Uh, New Gen Software, another order win. And HAL, 1173 crore rupees. That's an order win. While HD Infra has got two orders totaling to about 64 crore rupees. Um, with the overall CapEx theme, Rahul, in the spotlight, how are you looking at uh, some of these stocks to really take advantage and capitalize on this? Well, I think uh, most of the stocks, what you mentioned, I think uh, and, uh, the broader theme, what we have seen is obviously one is the power which has played very well in last one year and obviously the cap good stock. So I think uh, this would continue and after a long, long time, we've seen that uh, we have seen the manufacturing companies have come back with a capex plan. So I think this would continue uh, for a some time and I think uh, obviously those most of the stocks have rallied also in this space but I think the earnings could be decent for most of the names and I think it will continue for at least for a year or so. On that note then Rahul would like to take time out to thank you for joining in with your take on the markets. If you like this video then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.